and right now because we want to have waves we um, need to alter the speed so right click here say open curve and this will open the curve editor and now we're gonna write an expression the expression is for example we we need for the wave addition something like a sinusoidal curve something like this yeah emit don't emit emit don't emit um a function that's working pretty well is uh, setting a wave strength of 6.5 times san for sinus open parenthesis t where there's a real flow intrinsic variable for time times 1.5 close parenthesis plus 1.5 the latter one is uh, that we do not get into negative values because uh, real flow do stra does strange things when your emitter strength is getting into negative values. What we're also seeing is that, well, it's starting up, it's getting done, and we have these flat parts here, and they are very important. Um, you will not create noise wave animation without having these flat parts. So we can alter the wave strength. For example, if you think oh 6.5, I don't want to create a big tsunami. I want to create some some nice uh, beach waves. And for example, two should be sufficient, something like this. And um, by altering this one, you can change the frequency. So 0 0.5, or something like this. All right. And I said 1.5, this was in the test, uh, was the way to do it. Um, another thing, if you wave in the final animation, um, if you do not like that, if you do not like the form, and if you think, well, there has to be something that changed, um, change those values. It's the most important stuff of your whole wave animation. At least it was in my tests and in the tests after before. Um, all right, so we've set up this one for the grid fluid emitted main. We say also jittering of one and probably initial speed of two, whatever. And the rest we need also jittering of one and initial speed also of one. So this is just, just to give our particles an initial movement into one direction um, okay now something that's also very important select the emitter right click and say zoom selected and there we are uh, somewhere in space uh, sometimes a lot of software in the way it works um, all right for example pressing 2 and going to side view might be weapon of choice for the thing I want to do right now. Scroll there, press E to have the rotate handle, and you can see the, the, f the small arrow tip there. Make sure this is pointing about 90 degrees into the direction of the pier. Something like this. Beautiful. So rotation about 90. Oh, let's say it's really 90. Make it easy for this one. And we'll be doing like for all the other meters too. Wave, rotation Z is 90. And main is also 90. Okay, nice one. Um, so. Now the emitters are all pointing in the, the same direction. We can press four, press four to go into perspective view again. And we should definitely do a save right now. Something that's also important, go to File, Preferences, Backup, and hook Auto Backup to XML. Why am I doing so? This will create an automatic backup of your whole scene as an XML. 
and you can import XML files by using notes from X, import notes from XML and this will recreate your scene. This is because the real flow standard is an FLW. This is the standard scene format file. And um, in the uncertain case that this file should break, and when I was uh, doing this tutorial, the first version of this tutorial that I did broke. I had a really nice animation of the waves. I really loved that, and I could not open the FLW again. And if this should be the case, uh, you're lost. You cannot do anything anymore. You have all the particle files, everything, but you cannot keep on simulating, you cannot keep on working with that, because, um, for example, the grid fluid cache that w you'll be writing out will just be fitting into that very grid. It will not be fitting into a different grid. Probably if you have the same coordinate space and the same resolution, all right, but um, otherwise it will not be working. Otherwise it will not be working and so it's important that you have an autosave as an XML because the XML uh, is something that is human readable. Even though you should uh, miss a value when recreating a scene, you can look it up in the XML. It's really good stuff. It's really good stuff. So make sure this is always hooked on. So um, now we'll be creating some kill volume fields. K volume one. I'm pressing two again, uh, one again, in order to position that. And this will be positioned right after our emission object for the grid. And I'll be scaling that. And now I'll be duplicating the kill volume. Now it's here. Oh, this time it works. Zoom selected. Yes. Working fine. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, all right. Press two. Oh, I should have scanned prior to duplicating, but can do it now. Let's scale. Don't matter if there's something that's not probably. Uh, top, okay, uh, I scale that. Uh, press 2 again. And K volume of 1. Press R. This is for the scale operator. It's uh, the same as in Maya. This w it, that's why I have not been telling this explicitly. Now we're um, creating a, a gravity demon because we also need gravity. Where is gravity? Here. Yeah. Uh, leave everything pretty much by as default. Select all the demons we have. Right click group. Rename those to demons. And now I'll be adding gravity, K volume 01 and K volume 02. So why I've been um, doing this? Why have I been doing this? Why have I been creating those two kill volume fields? This is why my emission is starting here. The wave's going through the fluid, crashing against it, and then it gets out. Because otherwise, um, if I did not have a, a kill volume here, the whole fluid container will fill up like an aquarium. And I'm not trying to simulate an aquarium. The other thing here is and that the backdraft, everything that will um, get back, uh, is um, that will um, flow back here, might um, do some nasty, uh, nasty stuff in connection with my wave emitter. So I will be naming those rename k volume 
out and this one hey William back draft uh, well, something that's very important and um, I have to set the inverse to yes for both of them because uh, usually uh, the kill volume fields are meant to um, kill everything that is not inside their volume but now we need them to kill everything that wants to go pass through the volume so if we did not invert this we wouldn't be seeing any products so now we can save we have our emitters linked with a grid fluid domain we have a gravity link with a grid fluid domain and we have the um, the K volumes linked with a grid fluid domain besides this um, this setup one short one it's called a channel for example if you had a ship here that was uh, we couldn't for, you could carry, create a ship that was uh, swimming in the fluid going that direction and it was was looking like um, it would swim through a continuously changing volume because all the time the the new fluid is uh, flowing along that way and um, even though the ship is rather static and um, it would look like it would at least look like that it's a very useful very useful um, setup so uh, we're, we're kind of done and um, so now we, we save that because um, if real flow breaks now we have to recreate all this and we do not want this and um, well this is the time for you to get you some lunch or go to the supermarket or clean up your flat or whatever because now we need to simulate the the whole thing by pressing here and uh, as you can see using four threads for simulation it's a four core machine there are our particles yeah right now they're still looking a bit boring and you can see this is um, already settling not using too in uh, not looking uh, very interesting and um, but this this is pretty much a simulation and um, as you can see we're at frame two or frame three I press simulate again you can you can stop simulating it's, it's no problem let's say 500 because 200 frames if you take a look at the emitter uh, where's that here the emit wave right click open curve you can see that 200 frames this was approximately one wave uh, one wave this first one wave is emitted into the, the boring looking fluid I think it will not give us a very promising result and then we have frame 200 things so this is really the first wave that that's emitted into the turbulent into the turbulent fluid so um, we need more we ju just have to find a, a sequence inside of this sequence that will uh, look promising that we really like um, so when doing a, this for a job for example uh, you should um, always simulate more frames than you really need and then you could pick if there uh, for example if you um, have to do a 25 if you have, have to do a um, 25 now 10 second animation for example then um, animate then use 500 frames not only 25 because um, you might be picking up the the sequence that you like best yourself okay now we simulate and uh, well clean up your flat and get back to your computer in an hour or so and look how much what look at the progress